If you own a retail business or are responsible for making the purchasing decisions for one, you know one of the most important questions you can be asking yourself is how much inventory do you need to order this month? And that is where Open to Buy or OTB comes in as a, a model or a system for making sure you order just enough products so that you don't overstock or worst case scenario, you don't run out of things and you have customers coming in ready to buy, but they don't, you don't have the products that they're looking for. So OTB helps you to plan this out in a very systematic way. And one of the great tools for doing this is Excel. And so that's why today what I'm going to do is show you how you can build your own OTB calculator in Excel that's going to help you know exactly how much inventory you need to be ordering based on sales projections. So let's get started. So I'm going to be showing you how to create a relatively simple OTB planner spreadsheet today. But as I'm doing that, if you realize that your use case, your business is a little bit more complicated, you have more variables or something like that, I just want to encourage you to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give some tips for what you can do if you need something that's a little bit more robust than what we're building together today. But hopefully this will give you the basic building blocks that will benefit a large number of the people watching. So the first thing we need to do is just have some basic column headers. Uh, so we're going to have month, sales, cost of goods sold, ending, inventory, beginning, inventory, on order, and I'll explain what all these mean in just a minute. And OTB, that uh, open to buy, that's ultimately what we're trying to get at. What do we need to purchase um, for this month? So I'm just going to make these column widths a little bit wider. Alt H O W can get you there, or you can go to Format Cells um, right here and change the width. Uh, so I'm going to change the width of these to about 11, just to give us plenty of room to work in those. And I'll go ahead and center up those headings as well and make those bold. I'm not going to worry too much about the formatting uh, at this point other than just some basic things, wrapping the text, for example, so that we can see what those headings are. Okay, so now what we need to do is get our months filled out. A really easy way to do that is just to start out with whatever month you'd be beginning with. So we're going to do January 1st, 2025. And then instead of having to enter that over and over again, we can use the equals EO month formula to calculate the rest of them. So equals EO month, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select that previous cell, comma, zero, end that, and then plus one. And even if you don't understand how that works, it's no problem, just copy that exact formula, and we'll move that down. That way we have, we'll go ahead and go out two years to December 2026. And I'm gonna go ahead and format those cells as well uh, by clicking the more number formats, going to custom, because I want this to just show month and year, because we're not really um, concerned about the exact date, like January 1st, for example. Okay, so now that we have our table essentially built out, this is where your sales would be recorded, where your cost of goods sold would be reported. This step is really important because you're going to be converting to uh, from what your the gross sales versus what it costs you, and what you, what it costs you is ultimately what basis we're going to be doing this on. Uh, so we could almost have a heading of at cost up here to uh, just help us remember everything we're doing over here is at cost. Now you can do this either way, actually. And I think as we keep going, you'll kind of see that you could do it uh, all at the sales value and then convert it at the very end at cost, or maybe you just want to do it based on sales. But a lot of people today like to do it uh, looking at what the actual cost is to them as a business, because that's the amount their actual order will be for. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in some, I'm just going to drop in some example sales numbers here so we don't waste time with me typing those in. So there's some examples, example sales data. Okay, now you're going to have some percent margin and this tool that we're building could be built for either a specific product. Ultimately, that's how a lot of retail businesses are going to be opening. So you could think of this, this table that we're making right now as just planning for one product for now. Uh, or maybe you could do it for your whole business, depending on how that works. But in this case, I'm going to put the percent margin that's going to apply to uh, the product or the business as a whole, perhaps, if you're doing it that way. So 45%. Now that I have that there, I can calculate the cost of goods sold for every month using just the sales. So I'm going to do sales. So, sorry, equals, select the sales value next to it there, and I'm going to multiply that times, and this needs to go in parentheses, 1 minus this margin, assuming the margin, what I have the percent margin is a profit margin up there, and so your cost is 1 minus that. So 55% in this case. Okay, so now that's going to calculate that for us. We just need to put a dollar sign up here so that 
as we copy this formula down, it doesn't move, so we need a dollar sign in front of that too. Okay, now I'm gonna copy this formula, just Control C, you can also right click and do copy, uh, but Control C, select all those cells and paste it down. So now we have our cost of goods sold for every month. I'm going to eliminate the uh, cents on this because we're just looking in dollar values. So that way those will not be distracting. And in fact, I'm gonna format paint, paint formatter because I can't, I don't like those showing up as different um, sizes. Okay, so now we have the sales, cost of goods sold, and now we're ready to think about what our in ending inventory is. So this is the, it may seem strange that we have, we have ending before beginning. If that trips you out, you can always switch those around. Um, but the way that the math works, essentially, this is kind of the order you would go in. So the ending inventory with how we're setting it up today would be based on what your turnover rate is for that particular product or whatever you're building this around. So let's just say I want to have a turnover of two annually, meaning once every six months. Well, that would mean that I need my ending, I need my ending inventory to be the sum of my sales projections for the next six months. Because I want to have enough inventory at the end of January to last me February through July, if that's your turnover. So you would do that sum formula that you just saw me type in right there. Now, in this example, I'm actually going to assume not a six-month turnover or a, a turnover of two, but rather let's do a three-month. So if you had a four turnover, four, you want to turn over your inventory four times annually, then we can do it this way. And, of course, there is a way to set all of this up so that it isn't, rather than being a turnover count you're optimizing around, maybe it's that for this product you need it to last a certain number of weeks. So you need the product to be in stock uh, for six weeks before you reorder. There's a way to build it around that too. And at the end of this video, I'll kind of give some tips on that. Okay, so we're gonna have our ending inventory be the sales for the next three months. I should note that these are projected sales and maybe it would even be helpful to uh, put that in the title there. So this is projected sales. This is project, projected cost of goods sold. So based on the sales we're projecting for the next three months, that's what our ending inventory needs to be. Now our beginning inventory on this first row is going to be a typed in value. I'm going to just shade that cell for a minute so we kind of keep that in mind. So the beginning inventory, let's just say you would have this number from your systems, but let's just say it was 75,000. So that's what we started out with. And then let's say you also have um, $18,000 of this on order currently. Now we want to calculate well, what's the what do I need to purchase this month in order to sustain the inventory that I want. So in that case, it's just going to be our OTB formula. And for that, it's just going to be your sales, which is in this case we've converted to cost of goods sold because we're doing everything at cost. So our projected sales plus that inven in, uh, ending inventory minus the beginning inventory minus however much you have on order, and that's gonna tell you how much you need to order. So now I know, hey, this month, I need to order $56,201 worth of materials in order to make sure I have this ending inventory that I need. This is sort of a target value there. Uh, okay, so now let's make this so we can copy these uh, as formulas all the way down the table, because you don't wanna have to be entering this math every time, of course. So the first thing I'm gonna do, notice this projects for the next three months or gets uses the next three months. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy it down, but I'm gonna stop right here because if I carried it down any further, that would be misleading, right? So if I carry it down to here, now it's looking like, oh, I don't need that much, November 2026, but of course that's just because I don't, I'm not projecting out that far. So make sure you don't make that mistake and these should be blocked off. In fact, I'm gonna turn those a dark gray just so we know we, we shouldn't have anything there. Now the beginning inventory of this month, of course, is just gonna be the ending inventory of the pre previous month. So we can put our formula in right there and go ahead and copy that all the way to the bottom. Okay, and then on order, maybe you have, based on what you've ordered, this is really uh, when you plan to receive those things that have been ordered, not necessarily that you ordered in that month. Maybe you have a couple month lead time, and what, I, what I'm showing here in January of 2025 was actually ordered back in November or December. And so maybe I know that February 2025, we still have $23,000 worth of inventory that's still coming in. After that, you know, say we don't we don't have anything currently on order. So we'll just leave those blank, and then we need to take our OTB open to buy formula and copy that to the bottom. And so now I have a plan for the next two, roughly two years, uh, showing me how much I'm gonna need to buy every single month in order to keep my inventory where I want it to be. And so you can see it's a pretty simple calculator, but you can also see probably how this could get a lot more complicated. For example, maybe you don't just have one product or you can't lump everything together. Maybe you've got 50 different 
uh, SKU numbers or maybe 100 or 200 that you need to do this calculation for. And maybe you've got not one store, but you've got three or four locations and you, you need this at each of those locations. So now you're multiplying this times four or 500, uh, four or 500 times you need this table to be happening. And in addition to that, we also didn't consider plans for discounts that you may be running. There's not a whole lot of seasonality built into this. And it may also be the case that again, instead of your target being a turnover number, the number of times you want to turn your inventory over per year, maybe it's more that you have that forward stock count that you want to have on a weekly basis. So forward weeks of stock or FWOS. So maybe you you have for a particular product, you need to have six weeks of FWOS. Well, you can see how that really wouldn't work with this because we're going on a monthly basis. So now you need a way to be doing calculations that are more granular. Well, if any of that applies to you and you haven't already, you should hit like and subscribe to this channel. And that way, as I produce more content with some more complicated ways to do these uh, or robust ways to do OTP spreadsheets, you'll get notified about those. But if you're in more of a hurry, maybe you need something more quickly than that, or you just don't want to deal with the hassle of trying to figure this all out on your own, you can also reach out to our team anytime, customexcelspreadsheets.com. My information is in the description of the video, also in a pinned comment. So feel free to reach out. You can also just drop a comment here if you have any questions or you want to chat. We build custom tools like this for our clients every single day that do exactly what they want and that are completely tailored to their use case. So we'd be glad to do that for you. I should also mention two more things. One is notice when I was building the spreadsheet, I'm entering in manually what the projected sales are and the cost of goods and all of this information. But especially if you're doing this for a lot of products, you definitely don't want to be entering this in manually. So we can also build tools for you that automatically import that data from QuickBooks or other inventory management or POS systems as well so that you can do these things more with the click of a button than with thousands of keystrokes uh, or mouse clicks copying and pasting. So that can save you a lot of time. And one last thing I'll mention is that once you have this built out, wouldn't it be awesome if you could click a button and have it generate a report for you that shows you exactly where your over or understocked currently. It shows you some sort of alerts of, hey, here's the seven products you really need to uh, hop on and order today because they're getting a little bit behind. Well, we can also configure that kind of uh, feature as well. So hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next time.